Birdbird, and today we are talking about compositing or anime or anime compositing. So what we're gonna do today is kind of a follow-up on all my other anime tutorials. You guys love them so much that I was like, I'm gonna make more. So one very common thing in anime is that the shadows and the colors are actually done on the same layer, right? So I have my flats and I have my shadows and they're really just on the same level. But then how do they get these kind of smoky look to their shadows? Like it, it does look like there's a blur, but but like I can't do just like usually when I have a other layer on top and I, you know, I put a blur on it. Like I, I can't blur that because it's part of my color. If I if I blur my color, I, I blur everything, right? So that wouldn't work. So I'm gonna show you my little technique of how to kind of reproduce that cool smoky look that some anime productions have. There's many ways to do this. It's not the only way you can do this, but I found that it is a pretty easy and efficient way to do it on a whim, like really fast. So this is with it, and if I remove it, it's very crisp, classic, digital look. But if you put that little <laughs> quote-unquote anime treatment, I guess, it looks a bit more um, like smoky and fun. So that's what I'm gonna show you today. It's very, very easy and I all put it in a group. And by the way, I can control everything that is in the group from a distance using what we call publish attribute. I'm also gonna show you that uh, quickly, but I'll have a separate tutorial just on publish attribute. So you can just check that tutorial instead. Hey, hey. Inside the group, what do we have? Whoop. Something very, very simple. And I will destroy it, but I just wanted to show what it is in case people were curious before we start. So I'm gonna remove it and we're gonna start fresh. So you do need to have your cleanup and color and all of that done on one layer. Otherwise, it, there's no point in doing this. I will say though, because I'm using an old scene, um, I do have my color, my line, and because it's me, I did put the small details on the overlay because I think it, it goes better because otherwise here it gets convoluted and I don't like it. So usually I do separate it on three levels, but it is not common, I guess. So it's just what I do, but it works, so it's fine. Okay, so. I have my drawing and like I said, I need to have my line art, my color art, and my overlay all separated because I'm gonna treat them differently. Because like I said, <laughs> if I want my shadows to be blurry, if I just put a blur on my whole animation, then you know, I'm just gonna have a blurry animation. That's great! <laughs> so instead of blurring the whole animation, what we wanna blur is, you know, the color art. So, little trivia. Mm. A lot of studio in Japan, what they do to get the classic anime look is that they do their art inside a software which has like a line art layer and a color art layer. No matter the software, they're, they're like, there's ways to separate the line and the color. Then they export that and put on a compositing software, probably after if I get to be honest. And then they're gonna treat the color and the line differently to blur it and give it a more smoky look. So that's kind of what I'm trying to reproduce here in Dear Harmony. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna start with my color. I'm gonna give it a blur. And now my color is blurry. Because it's a very small character in the scene, a blur of one, it might be a bit too much. You can always set it to half the strength. And that's way better. And just this is gonna give the blur we need to our shadows. But the problem is that now everything is blurry. So the color is kind of spilling outside the character. So next, what you need to do is actually cut the color art so that it doesn't bleed outside of itself. So that's something common. I've done it in many other tutorials. You're just gonna cut the color art uh, after the blur by itself. It's important that the cutter is after the blur. Don't forget to invert it. It's important that the cutter is after the blur because otherwise you're just gonna blur the result of the color art cutting itself, which doesn't make sense. So <laughs> always put it before the cutter just to make sure that your color art doesn't bleed. And sometimes in some production, you also see that the line art is a bit foggy, blurry. So you can do the same to the line art, but usually um, I like to keep the both blurs separated because then you can control just how much you want your line art to be blurred. Some production will blur the line art whole. Some production will blur the line art and then put another instance of the line art on top to give it a bit more solidity, but allow kind of the blurriness to make it look a bit more organic. Cause that's the goal. We want it to look a bit more like, less perfect is what I'm going for. And and that's really it. And you know, since my I have an overlay, I will give it the same treatment as the color art. My overlay doesn't usually spill outside of itself but just in case you know if you want to be safe you can always cut it with the color art but in the case of my overlay it's not necessary i can just blur it the whole way because it, it's just my eyes and i know it's not going to spill outside of my character and yeah and if you want the blur of the overlay and the color art for example to be different like maybe i want this to be way more blurry i don't know i can but if i want them to be the same all you have to do is take both blur actually there yeah, take both blur and then take one of them and just like uh, give it a function so it becomes an animation and then you take this one you copy the function link and then you can just paste it there 
and now they're gonna be linked together so if you change one uh, both of them will change at the same time which is kind of great and usually since uh, I would reuse that same system over and over again I would of course um, group it and before I group it I would add a temporary um, composite just to make sure that everything is flowing out under one strand very important and then you know you take it you group it group selection the shortcut is also Control g or command g and then it gives you this group and then if i remove it it's like that and you can then just slide it here to have the effect on so basically you're you're creating yourself a node full of other nodes i'm gonna call it anime treatment yeah and after that if you feel fancy you can always uh, publish your attributes outside of your group so to do that, you know, you can just check my other tutorial, but it would basically allow you to get your effect to appear outside of the group. So I would go here and you'll just have it uh, show up. So when, you're, when you publish your attributes, you just have to make sure that you publish it by clicking there. Then it would show up here in your group and you can control it from a distance, which is kind of neat. So if I go here and I change the radius of my color, I would change it, but from a distance, which is very useful when you group your effect. So you don't have to constantly dig inside and stuff. Yeah, so that's it for this week. I hope you liked it. Goodbye.